What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. You may already notice that things look a little different than they usually do and that is because of our topic in this video. It's all about 8K. I'm shooting on the a7R5 instead of my a7S3 and the lens on this video is the 16 to 35 GM set at 20 millimeters. All of that will become relevant in just a few minutes. Also, today's video is brought to you by Very Good Presets. Now, full disclaimer, this is my new business and I am very excited to share it with you. Over the many years I've been a photographer, I have really enjoyed shooting film and specifically shooting on Portra 400. I shoot it at 120 and I shoot it at 35 and I love it. I think it just has probably the most beautiful look of any film that I can get my hands on. And I wanted to create a Lightroom preset that really felt like Portra 400. Now there are several other Portra 400 presets out there. I own almost all of them and they all generally left me feeling a little disappointed in their results. After studying over a hundred of my own images and really trying to make a preset that was consistent across any platform and felt like Portra 400, I arrived at the very first offering on VeryGoodPresets.com. So be sure to check it out. There's a discount code right below for you to download it yourself if you would like to check it out. And of course, anything you buy from VeryGoodPresets.com goes to support this channel and my creative endeavors. So thank you in advance. Before we get too far into our talk about video and how much resolution these companies are trying to pack into a sensor, let's remember where we came from. My friend Allie has this project where every two weeks she picks up a new old digital camera and only shoots with it. She posts it on her Instagram and she reviews it on her YouTube channel. You can check out a car right up here and see what it's all about or in the link below. Well, she recently gave me this Olympus C2040 it's from the early 2000s. It's a compact digital camera from 20 years ago, and it shoots a whopping two megapixels. She also gave me this Kodak Easy Share C340. It's a whopping five megapixels. And I mean, it's, it's an awesome little point and shoot camera. Let's give it a try here. Oh yeah. So look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Five megapixels. My wife's camera whenever we got married was this Nikon Coolpix 2010, 12 megapixels, which is what is on most of our mobile phones these days. And the megapixel wars continued to rage on until I feel like we hit a good place a few years ago. You had the 20 and 30 megapixel consumer cameras, and then you got into maybe like the R line of Sony, which this is the R3, and it was pushing in the 40s, and then the R4 and 5 with 61 megapixels, and I think we've leveled out and the megapixel wars have come to an end. Now the video resolution wars are ramping up. Whenever things went from 640 to 720 and 1080 high definition, that was a pretty revolutionary thing. And there was a huge difference between 640 by 480 and 1920 by 1080, massive difference. The step from 1080 to 4K, I don't even know how noticeable it is when you consider the viewing distances of most TVs and most people's homes. And then you've got the absurd 8K making its way in the cameras. And honestly, it feels a little gimmicky to include 8K resolution when nobody's gonna be watching 8K resolution. But that's where the misunderstanding of how to use 8K really easily takes over our mind because if you use 8K a different way, it actually makes a ton of sense. So why are we shooting wide in the space today in our video? It's because I wanted to demonstrate how 8K can be super helpful for creating a break in your footage. And what I mean by that is if you were to watch your favorite TV show or watch the news or a TED talk or honestly anything created in the last five or six years and sit down with a stopwatch and time the cuts, you'll see some programming go from three seconds on a camera before a cut to five, six seconds. You will see quite a bit of change constantly happening. And that's because our attention span really demands that breakup to keep us engaged. In fact, if you watch any of my prior videos, you see a lot of punch ins and punch outs. Well, I'm punching in from 4K to maybe 2K or maybe at worst 1080, but the whole video is still a 4K video and looks 
great on YouTube because that's probably where you're watching it on your phone or on your tablet or on maybe on your television. And that downgrading on the punch in is irrelevant. So like I was saying, if you were to watch how many cuts are happening, you're gonna see them pretty often. Well, in older days, that would require you to set up multiple cameras and constantly be switching the camera you're looking at or perhaps even turning to a different camera to get a different cut. But with the higher resolution video, what you're able to do is punch in to a lesser high definition, but it's still high definition. And 8K gives us the ability to punch in like this, or we could even punch in further like this. Now this is not flattering. So we're punching back out. Where 8K becomes really helpful is our ability to have a wide as I'm shooting right now, but then I can also punch in and get a mid shot and let it ride if I need to, and it's still going to be incredibly high resolution. And I could even punch in further if I wanted to, giving me three different setups on one lens and one camera, and that is super convenient. So if I was gonna go vlog on a beautiful landscape somewhere, I really could just take this one lens, a 16 to 35, and get some footage that's nice and wide, and then get some B-roll that has a mid look or even a tight look on the same lens. I could be a 35, but punch it in maybe four times. So as you do the math, you see, you start getting up into a pretty high punch in view just through being able to go from 8K down to 1080. You get a ton of diversity doing this and that makes 8K actually a really compelling feature for a camera like the a7R5. It gives you diversity on one lens. Now, of course, you're not gonna make a movie like this or and you're probably not gonna make a documentary, but you can definitely make videos like these, tutorials, walkthroughs, reviews, real life application, or podcasting, anything else that you might wanna do with your camera and single lens setup. If you can get a resolution as high as 8K, it's pretty incredible to be able to work with it. Now, I will say, Working with 8K footage is pretty complicated without having a, a great, robust computer to do the work on. Fortunately, I have a pretty powerful MacBook. Even that computer with Final Cut, which is my editing setup, does tend to struggle a little bit when I put in the 8K footage into it. But this is how technology works. It's a step at a time. Cameras step up, computers step up. Lenses get sharper, sensors get bigger, resolution gets larger. And that's just the way our technology is progressing but if we learn to leverage it the right way, and we're not trying to make 8K videos for our TVs and for YouTube, that just seems insane. No, let's use our 8K to create multiple angles with a simpler setup. I would much rather go out with the a7R5 and a 16 to 35 than go out with the a7R5 and five other lenses in my bag to get the diversity in shots. And yes, I know there's different things happening even with physics at different lenses with lens compression and all that, but still, for the purposes that I shoot for for video and what I believe most people, maybe even like yourself would shoot for, some Something like this is just so sufficient and convenient. So don't roll your eyes too hard when you start seeing 8K pop up on every camera. If you use it the right way, it actually can be incredibly helpful. And I hope this video has been helpful for you. So if it has been, like, subscribe if you're not subscribed, continue to follow along. All my information is in the description below. So be sure to check out my website, check out very good presets, get that Portra 400 and see what you think. Leave a comment, let me know if you're shooting in 8K and if so, if it's been helpful for you and if it's changed your workflow, I would love to hear from you. I always try to reply to every comment, so be sure to drop one below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.